Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. I'm going to start working now on our CZ457 Varmint at one uh, rifle. And we'll start with replacing this uh, scope. This is one I had mentioned previously I just had on hand because I had, could get rings, cheap rings to put it on and go out and shoot it while I waited for a rail. And so we'll take this, this off now and install our rail. The rail we're going to install is from uh, DIP um, or DIP products or DI products. Um, it's a 25 MOA rail. Pretty reasonable. I'll put a link down below to this once we get it installed if everything goes well. So um, let me get these rings off and we'll come back and show the installation of the rail. All right, got everything out. Now it comes with some very simple instructions. It says to slide this onto this dovetail. So this is one part integral to the receiver, this 11 millimeter dovetail. And what this does then is it slides onto that. So you have to start from the rear. Well, I guess you could start from the front. Carefully slide it on there and guide that. And then you'll see you'll get the holes lined up. It lines up also with the ejection port. Now, the next thing it says to do is put a little bit of Loctite on it. And it says purple. I have blue. Um, blue being removable. And so I think purple is a little bit easier, perhaps, if I remember right. Don't quote me on that. But... Um, so I'll put a little bit of blue Loctite on there, and we're going to start this. Now, it's a very, very light um, torque. It says 6 to 8 inch-pounds. And so uh, if you have one of these Wheeler um, fat wrenches, that the, the torque, they actually only go to 10. So I've got this set just below that level, and we'll see if it'll torque or if it'll just clutch out. So I'll just get this started, sort of feel it go into the hole. There you go. And then go on to the next one. Now he uses a really small Allen head too here. And so uh, as far as bits goes, I've got a really big set of bits and it doesn't fit any of those. So I'm using a Torx bit that fits in there just a little bit. Hopefully it won't slip and we'll be able to torque this up. No more torque than we're going to be applying to it. Just a very little bit. So applying just a tiny, this little bit of blue Loctite. And then we'll thread that down in there. Just make sure everything lines up, and then we'll torque it down when we get to that point. I don't like to get too much in there because it just really makes a mess. So uh, if you get too much, just wipe it off with a cloth. It's no big deal. If you probably have all have done that anyway. Uh, like that. That's really too much. You see how it comes out the top? So I'll wipe that off. keep that mess from getting everywhere. We'll put our last one in. I like doing it with these bits because you can get a better feel if it's going in the hole crooked or things aren't just quite aligned. You get a good feel for it and then you can kind of tighten them up roughly by hand without putting too much force on them. And then go to the torque wrench. Now, it does say to torque from the inside out. And so anybody that's worked on cars, especially cylinder heads, you'll know that pattern. You generally start from the inside out and then you have a specific, on a head, you'll have a specific torque sequence. But um, this one will just start from the inside out. And the reason being is if you're going to stress or strain it, really uh, stretch it, you'll want to go in one direction, right? So if you start from the center, then you'll be pushing outwards instead of from here, pushing to the middle. And you can imagine it would try to bind it in an arc instead of just pushing it in a linear way. So that's what we'll do. And I've got this set, if I showed you here, um, there's 10. I'm just barely below it. This is 6 to 8, so hopefully we'll be able to clutch. We'll just sort of gently tighten these up and get a feel for that. Now I'm going through the outside because I've already done the two middle. And I go back to the middle. And back to the outside. Yeah, I don't feel this thing wanting to clutch. So let me get a set of pliers. I'm gonna grab a hold of this and then we'll um, we'll see if we can make it clutch at that low setting. It might not be. One second. Okay. I was able to make it clutch. I went ahead and backed it off just a little bit below that mark again, but if you do it, 
you see there it is clutching so I want to be careful not to torque too hard here and mess something up so we'll just keep tightening these up gently go from there Yeah, now these are going on down in there like they weren't all the way down in there. There we go. I must not have been quite aligned because now they're all going down farther. Always be good and safe and sorry than going very, very light when you do this kind of thing. There we go. Now we're torquing. So let me back this one off and we'll torque from the center out. All right, that should be right on eight pounds if this is accurate below that scale. Uh, so we'll see. I think it seems solid enough. I don't think it's going anywhere because all these are really doing is acting like jack screws because this is already in the dovetail. So they're putting um, downward pressure, which drives this rail up into the dovetail and keeps it from moving. So that should be pretty solid. So let's go ahead now and we're going to install our Vortex Strike Eagle um, 4 to 24 scope and this one has one a uh, one piece integral rail so where it sits will be an interesting thing because we'll have to see about how this shells eject i don't think it'll be an issue but we'll uh, do that so let me play with this we'll get it set on there and be right All back right. got the uh, base mounted now this is a vortex ar style base because i took this off one of my uh, backup ar rifles and uh, if you notice it kind of mounts it's got I should have showed the bottom of the base, but the bottom of the base on the inside isn't flat. It's got a uh, cross member that drops down in between on these Picatinny rails. So it helps locate it and keep it from, I'm sure, keep it from a torque or twisting, that kind of thing, on the base. Um, but that limits you on where you can tighten up on your rail here. So I think it's going to be fine. We'll check eye relief here in just a minute. But this is about as far forward as I could get it um, on there. So we'll turn this thing around and take a look at the backside and do our torque settings. And um, if you see there, then you get a better idea that we're, we're at the cutout for the ejection port is over there. So this is forward of that a little bit on this side. This is where we still have both sides of the rail. This one we both have the rail. And this is right at the back of that rail so you know i don't know i think it'd be okay especially on a 22 if this was a big bore rifle i wouldn't be doing that i'd put on separate scope rings and mount it up front and we may still i just don't want to change this don't have to because i probably will eventually take this scope off put it back on the gun it came from and put another scope on here but this is supposed to go to 20 inch pounds according to vortex so we'll sort of sneak up on that we'll do the same thing we'll tighten from the inside out uh, and Again, if any stretching goes on, it'll be going on lengthwise instead of pushing back to the middle. So now we can go ahead and, and torque up. And we're at 20 inch pounds again here on our torque wrench. All right, now we'll check our eye relief and see how it works. Probably have to extend the uh, stock a little bit more than what I have here, but we'll see what it looks like, uh, and then we'll come back. All right, if you can see, uh, see well here, I've got the cheek rest elevated a good bit here, and then the uh, butt stock has been extended as well. Now, that all makes for very comfortable shooting for me. Length of pull is just fine, and I get a really nice, clear, comfortable, full round circle or vision uh, or eye relief of my scope and so that's really good and i did it all i did it several different magnifications ending up at 24 power which is of course if you know the hardest to see your reticle in so that's all good everything's set to go now uh, the rail did tighten up just fine back here and so it's really steady and sturdy i think it's going to be just fine i uh, went ahead and put the wheeler bubble uh, level system on here and so this one tells me the the level of the base to the scope or to the barrel excuse me the base to the top of the barrel where we have the machined in dovetail that's one piece to this receiver and then we have the scope uh, the one on top of the scope these two agree so that means that the scope then is now leveled to the base which is leveled to the top of the receiver and so we should be good to go 
Um, so the next thing I do, I'm waiting for our Yo Dave trigger spring mod to lighten up the trigger pull. If you remember in the last video, I showed that this has a two pound, 10 ounce pull. And um, let's see, I have it, it is clear by the way, but I'll show you all. Clear and clear, magazine's empty. And we have a two pound, you know, 10 ounce here, which is nice, but I want it to be less than that. And then when I go doing a bunch of ammo testing, I want it to be set up the way I'm gonna leave it and uh, go from there. So anyway, uh, we had a lot bigger, a lot better scope on this thing now, and we should be able to have a lot of fun out on the range. All right, just a couple days later, we have our Yo Dave's um, trigger spring in. And so it comes with this support block so you uh, can support the trigger and not damage the trigger assembly when you take it apart. And so we'll get this apart. We'll take our um, barreled action out. Uh, one thing I did note is I had, when I got this you know, brand new, the action screws are really loose. I mean, really loose. And so uh, a lot of people have recommended you to go to 35 inch pounds and then uh, at the range where you're shooting, uh, creep up in five inch pounds increments and it has an effect on accuracy. So maybe we'll test that as well. But um, anyway, let me get this uh, barrel and action out and we'll work on our trigger. All right, we have our uh, action out now. We have it supported with a block of wood plus the um, plastic, probably HDPE block that they have that comes with the Yo Dave uh, trigger spring to support the actual trigger body here and all. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I kind of put this under here to help get a little bit higher because of the height of the action um, with the scope on it. So anyway, um, that's what I've done. Now there is three. There are three screws on this uh, 457 trigger. This one is for post travel or over travel. This one here is for pre travel or creep. And then this one is the um, pounds or pole weight. And so what you have is this is a seven millimeter screw. Now I've actually, or a seven millimeter nut on here. I've actually uh, loosened that lock nut already. And then you need to back this thing out. And we'll just go ahead and take it out. I know some people have actually done this with leaving, uh, just pulling the spring here, but we're gonna do it the way Yo Dave uh, says to do it in his video. So anyway, so we have the pin lined up and then in my big hand out of the way, I have a punch. These are Wheeler punch sets um, to do that and the Wheeler hammer. So we'll just sort of slowly tap on it and drive that pin out. Better set my nut over here on my cloth or we'll lose it. And we're driving it through. I'm just not hitting it real hard. There we go. So that should be free. And now, if I've driven it far enough, which looks like I may not be quite enough yet. Uh, it'll come out. So let's just tap it a little bit more here. All right. Now our trigger and our spring. Uh, that thing's still just, that pin is still just barely in there. So uh, we'll go ahead and just tap it, holding this action up just slightly. Because there's just not a lot of force on here. Have to realign our trigger. Get that back in there. There we go. There we go. Now the pin's completely out and we can pull our trigger out. So here's the spring we're going to replace. Now it's got a little bit of this lube on there. And that's one thing they say, it kind of holds it in place, but also tends to lube it. We're going to clean this outside of this too, though, because my pull weight was a little bit higher than what other people had reported. And so we're going to clean this up and then lube around this uh, pivot pin as well in there. Now, what lube I'm going to use, I bought some Molly lube, but then I remembered that I still had this um, lube from Wilson Combat. And uh, I've used it over the years on my 1911s and been really happy happy with it. Um, what do they call it here? Ultima Lube. So we're going to use that in this case. So let's wipe this thing down, clean the hole a little bit out, and now we can apply just a little bit of this lube when we put our pin back in. It won't take much, but to this surface and anything, it's going to be rubbing in there. See if we can't get a little bit better 
uh, pull weight on our trigger or smoothness I should say on trigger it was really smooth but my pull weight is just a little bit higher okay so now what they say to do is to go ahead then and to apply more of this lube down in this hole where the spring is and it kind of holds holds it and captures it while you install it back into the action so we're going to do that Get a little bit of that on there maybe just a little bit more this one had quite a bit in there There we go. Now you're supposed to work this back into position with keeping that pin captured and back into its hole. So we'll work on getting that in there and we'll line this thing up and drive the pin. All right, I've got the trigger spring in. Now what I did was uh, I took the wrench I used to take this set screw out with and put it back in the hole and kind of used it to guide the spring back into position. And that, that worked uh, pretty well. It's a little hard to see, but if you have a good light, you can see just in there. Guide that back in. I, then I threaded the set screw in by hand and then uh, reset the trigger pin. Uh, it's pretty tight. I didn't. Uh, it's not going to drift out of there any. I don't think at all. So I'm not going to use any. I saw some people using Loctite and things like that there, but I think that would just be a mistake because you want that to pivot very freely underneath there. So anyway, um, it fits well and that's good. So now. I've already done some initial trigger pulls, but we're going to check it once we get it back in the rifle again. But I was getting about one pound um, and three ounces or so. So that's a significant improvement, and I haven't even um, really played with this too much. So in fact, what we'll do maybe is just, just for curiosity's sake, we'll back this out just a little bit, and then we'll tighten it up and see if we come in closer to one pound. Out, the uh, set screw out lightens the pull. And then we'll just, uh, this is a seven millimeter uh, lock nut on there, by the way. So make sure you use a seven millimeter nut. And uh, so that should be good. So I'll put this back in the, in the um, stock and we'll check our trigger pulls. All right, our receiver and barrel are back in our stock now. We've you know, taken the action screws and torqued them to 35 inch pounds. So let's take our trigger pull gauge now and let's do our, our checks on the trigger. So the gun is clear. Magazine is out, nothing in the chamber, nothing in the bolt. So we've reset it and let's set our uh, trigger pull at zero. And let's just do a nice steady pull. One pound, 3.1 ounces. So let's check it again. One pound, 3.2 ounces. And we'll give it a third time here. One pound, 2.4 ounces. So our average, one pound, 2.9 ounces. Now, if you remember earlier, uh, we were getting two pounds, 10 ounces. That's the best I could get out of the adjustments of the previous uh, trigger spring, the one that came from the factory. So this Yo Dave, uh, well, really, Two thumbs up. That's a great, simple modification. Not too bad to put in. Just got to take your time, make sure you're getting lined up, and don't mess anything up by not supporting it well. So this is a good thing. It gives you this block. You can use a block of wood, just the same, but just got to be uh, careful in doing that. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Now, one thing I did go ahead and do was the screw right below the set screw for the pull weight is the pre-travel or the creep. And I went ahead and adjusted that just a little bit. So it just barely moves before that breaks. So we'll see how I like that. I may want to toy with that a little bit more. Uh, Post-travel here uh, is the screw straight up on the bottom. But this other one right below the set screw is the one I adjusted just ever so slightly. So we'll see how it goes and uh, how we really like it. But yeah, I'm really impressed. It's going to be a lot of fun shooting with a, a one pound, basically three ounce trigger, and it can go lighter. I didn't adjust it all the way out. Um, I did do a safety check, by the way, for those of you that have worked on Remington 700s and, and their triggers, is you can take this, set your trigger, right? I don't know how well you can see that on the screen here, but what you do is you drop it. Right, and you got to make sure the gun doesn't fire, the trigger doesn't trip, and I've done that several times, and you see then it's still good. Um, you don't want to be able to jar it and set the trigger off. So um, anyway, awesome. 
Uh, the next next time, the next video we'll do, we'll take this thing to the range and we'll start giving it its full workout now that we got a good Vortex scope on there. And then we have our trigger <laughs> just in a beautiful place. And so uh, looking forward to this. We'll have fun at the range next. All right, back in from the range and showing just a few results of our, our shooting with the CZ457. Now we put the Vortex Strike Eagle scope on there, the Yodave trigger spring upgrade, fantastic uh, results with that. Um, the only thing is I've set that to one pound and three ounces and that's the lightest trigger I shoot. Most of mine are right about two pounds. And with that, um, some of these uh, I can blame on while well, I was getting used to the trigger <laughs> because it, it went off several times before I was really ready for it. But I'll show you a couple of those that are very clearly that's what happened. Uh, so this is the uh, Gila Super Extra. And so this is, you know, it's not a bad group there, roughly three quarters of an inch. Uh, this one is the same here. And so it's pretty much the same group size here. Uh, then I shot Ely Club. And Ely Club, that's the first shot. Now the rifle had set and got a little bit cooler. That's the first shot. And then it was trying to put them in, you know, a decent group there. Um, now here's one. Now there's four here and one here. This was definitely me. Um, trigger going off before I was ready. Um, so that's, that's sort of what's going on with that one. Here's another Ely Club. I dropped down to here and did it again. And this one I felt was the same thing. Not as bad as this one. I definitely knew this one. This one I felt like I just went off just a hair a bit before I was really ready. And so you can kind of see that. And so that's that target. It was just the first sort of rounds to, to get the scope sighted in and get it closer and things like that. So then I went and I ran nine in a row of nothing but Ely Team because I had good results with that in a 1022. And so the very first few rounds here, this one was high. That was the cold bore shot, but it also I know the trigger went off early. And then the second shot, and then these fell in here. Um, here we have four grouping together and one left. I don't know if that was me or not. Possible, I don't know. Uh, here we get into four more with one high. That was definitely me. Still trying to get used to the trigger. I mean, it was, I was reasonably in control, but I think there was much more to be done. And so I'm still learning that trigger because it's very clean, very sharp break, um, almost no take up or, or creep in it. And it's just a one pound, three ounces. It's just very, very light. So I'm getting used to that. So here I start to get a little bit more comfortable. Here I put four in a clover leaf and then pulled that one there. And that's, that's more than likely me again. Uh, here, five more in there. So the groups are getting better. Groups are getting better. Yeah, and I screwed that one up. Without a doubt, I know I pulled that one off. And so you see though, but the, the gun is getting used to the ammo and then getting better and better and I pulled that one and then I was able to put that one together and that's I'll, I'll show the stats here when we're done um, but that was a, a really good result so that actually now beats my 1022 as far as minimum group size and MOA and that's they're really close but that is just slightly better so uh, good results uh, excellent results now with our CZ 457 uh, and with changing the scopes. Now I'm going to do another thing though. Since this, this cantilever style scope is from an AR, it puts all the scope weight and, and torque and moment here all from the scope all the way at the back. Right, so I'm going to change that and put on just regular, or well, heavy rings here and here. And it might lower this just a little bit too. 
And so even though I got it sighted in, it won't take long to get it back. It didn't take long to sight this in fast. Um, but the other reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this scope and put on our 6.5 Grendel. And I'll show you that because uh, I continually, um, I, I thought I had it figured out. I'm just not 100% sure I had it figured out on that gun uh, with the scope was moving. The mount was moving slightly on that one. So this is, this is a, I think this is a better mount perhaps on that Burris Pepper uh, quick release one. And so my other Burris Pepper is not quick release. Like I say, I have great luck with it. I had no issues with it. And it's shooting very tiny groups on another AR. But this one was shooting really well too, perfectly stable. So I'll move this scope to that gun, move that Strike Eagle to this one, put it in new rings, and then we'll shoot this one again. So I'll find out two things. I'll find out one about the mount being on the Grendel rifle. And then I'll also find out about the other scope being on this rifle. Because this scope is running really well. It ran perfectly on the AR it was on. The scope is running perfectly on this one. No movement, no issues inside. And if I see these same kind of screwed up groups, well then I'll take that other scope that's on the Grendel and send it back to Vortex and let them take a look. We'll find out. I still would believe it's in the mount. But we'll find out then whether it's the scope or the mount. So anyway, uh, great results out of the first few rounds at our uh, CZ-457. Uh, I'm up to about 170 rounds to it now, so uh, no reason to clean it just yet. So we'll shoot it a little bit more, and then I'll give it its uh, first cleaning somewhere around 200, 250 rounds. And then typical 22, right? You don't want to overclean these barrels. So from that point on, for quite a while, I'll just be cleaning uh, the action and the, the bolt only. So... Anyway, I thought you might like to see that. Really cool results, and uh, we'll catch you later.